Floss Tube world. I'm Morgan. Welcome back to another episode of my Floss Tube channel. What's Morgan stitching? Um, Merry Christmas to those who celebrate and happy holidays to those who maybe don't. Um, I am coming at you today with a wrap up on all of my 2023 finishes, uh, starts, and I think most of my whips, I don't think I've pulled everything out, but um, I've got a list going in front of me. Um, but I just thought before it goes into the madness and while I'm still on holidays and at home on my own, I will take the opportunity to jump on and say hi um, to wrap up 2023 um, and just kind of revisit everything that I've done this year, which is very exciting. Um, pardon the color difference to my face. Um, we had our last wedding of the year uh, a couple of little days ago, so I still have tan on, but um, I have scrubbed it off my face and I haven't put any makeup on, so hence the difference there. I'm not sick. I just have two colors of skin at the moment. Um, but yeah, we had my sister-in-law's wedding, which is beautiful. Everything went well. Um, I've been on holidays now for, I think today marks a full week and I've still got another two and a half weeks off, which is just delightful. Um, my plans for the holidays consist of a lot more reading. Um, I actually have a pile in front of me, so I'm finally going to jump on the bandwagon. Um, and then I brought another um, book about anything Japan and cherry blossoms. Um, so at the foot of the cherry. Um, so they'll be my holiday reads um, as well as a couple of things on my Kindle. Um, just to touch on reading, I finally finished the Throne of Glass series and it was okay. It might be a controversial um, opinion, but it just didn't grab me like um, Akatar has. And I think that there was just a lot that, like it didn't need to be seven books. Uh, book six didn't need to exist in my head at all because the character that I hate the most <laughs> is basically centered around that whole book. Um, could have been a couple of chapters thrown into some of the other books to kind of beef it out that way. Nonetheless, I read it. Um, I don't see, per, my personal opinion is I don't see how that series put SJM on the map the way that it did. Um, in my opinion, Akatar is the one that did it. And I read Akatar, then Crescent City, then Throne of Glass. And I think if I had have read it in the order that she published it and read Throne of Glass first, I probably wouldn't have made it through the other two series. In saying that, Crescent City is a pain to read and I will never reread the first two books, um, but I am very excited for book three to come out and I'm glad that I finished Throne of Glass before that one. Uh, book three comes out, I think it's end of Jan. So I'm glad that I read that. Don't come at me if you don't agree, we can all agree or disagree, but that's just my opinion. Um, I did enjoy it. But like, obviously I finished the whole series, but it just didn't grab me. Like there was nothing in there that I was hooked on waiting to, ha I don't know. Anyway, anyway, that's just my opinion, but that's done. So I said to myself, I need to finish that off before I go starting any other series. Um, so I've got fourth wing there and I've, I think I'm going to read at the foot of the cherry tree as a bit of a palette cleanser before I go into fourth wing. I am not rereading anything going into Crescent City. Um, and then I'm going to start a few other of my want to reads and, and TBR pile books. Um, I tried to make a conscious effort. Sorry, book talk, by the way, if you, if you don't mind. Um, I tried to make a conscious effort to finish off all of my, um, current books in progress. So I've dwindled that down to the point where I'm starting a new. Um, and so I'm just trying to focus only on what is in my current red, uh, to be red pile, which is majority 
I've either got the Kindle or the hardcover or like physical copy book version. Um, so I want to try and just read that down a bit before I start looking into getting into any other series um, or anything like that. But if you have any book recommendations, I'm always open to them. Just let me know. Slide into my DMs or leave me a comment below. Um, I kind of read anything. So um, other than that, I... I'm just going to be taking these holidays slow and resetting. Um, we're doing a lot of decluttering of our house still. I've tackled a couple of things, some cupboard drawers, my wardrobe clothing. I've got all of my shoes to take to, um, to donate. Um, we've got a spare room, which is set up as a spare room with the bed. So Tim's parents will stay there for Christmas when they come over. Um, and we have another spare room that is a junk room and I don't want a craft room because I kind of have a whole cupboard for it all. And I like being, Tim and I don't like doing our little respective hobbies away from each other um, and isolating ourselves. We do like to still be in the same room. It's just a thing that we've always liked doing. Um, so I do like to be able to bring my cricket, my sewing machine or anything out into our dining area, which is where I am now um and work on it you know he's either playing playstation or watching tv or i can watch tv while he plays his computer or something um so we now are working on clearing out that spare room because we actually need to access a mattress that i have very badly tetris into the back of the room behind the big furniture that needs to go so uh, that's our plan for the next couple of days and and these holidays just to kind of reset that room um, and then I'll feel like I've accomplished everything because we got rid of all of the junk from the kitchen. Um, all the renovation junk is gone. So it's like we're almost, almost there at kind of decluttering and taking everything back to a minimal need. I have, I have shoes that I brought when I went to America in 2012 that I've never worn, but I brought for $10 because I have a big foot and they were my size. And I've held on to them and then now I look at them. They're like seven inch gigantor shoes. I'm never going to wear those. I will break an ankle looking at them. So I'm like, it's time to move it on. So we'll get there. And then just uh, going to be working on the rest of my stitchy goals. I have one more start to get to this year. And that I think is going to be my start just before the new year. Um, just so I can finally have started it. And then I don't have any plans into next year as to how I'm stitching. I'm just going to try and stick to what I've got um, and finish everything off and kind of actually work on the pieces that I think I showed at my new mid year parade that I haven't been touched since. So that and then I think my goals also need to be to actually fully finish some projects too like that's a pretty decent goal to maybe try and tackle because all of the finishes that I've gotten to this year I'm like I'll oh, finish this as a pillar I'll finish this as this and they're all still just unfinished so that's probably what I'm going to aim for in 2024 but anyway time to get into the stitching um I have broken this down into three categories. Don't mind me. I just realized before I went to do this that it's 11, it was 11.30 and I hadn't yet had a coffee. It's not like me, I've normally had three by now. Um, I've broken this down into projects I finished in 2023, projects I started in 2023, and then the remainder of my whips. Um, with that in mind, I'm just gonna jump into what I finished. I don't have dates, I'm sorry. I just, that's not something I keep track of. Um, I've got most of the breakdown of everything, like fabrics and counts and stuff in the description that I'll put in the bottom of the video. Um, I can't guarantee that I will say all of them now, but just if you've got any questions, let me know. But first up that I finished, this one here was my first finish of 2023 is Luna Mystica by Bella Filipina. Um, I did this on a 32 count lavenders blue by color cascade fabrics. Um, I use all of the called for beads 
think it's chronic. And then I worked out that I hate chronic. So then I didn't use chronic anymore. Um, it's all stitched over two. And I had a really lovely time stitching this one. The beading actually looks pretty hectic, but like, it's easier than it looks. Like I was really daunted by it, but then when I actually did it, it was good. So my goal is eventually to stitch Soul Tropica, and I feel like they're kind of like sister pieces. Um, and then that way I can have them up together um, somewhere, I don't know where, but I will get them finished off the same so that they can, um, they can live together. My sister also cross stitches. Um, she's actually doing the gigantic B that that full coverage B that I did from Gecko Roo. She's also doing that, um, and she's she's got a daughter. And I'm like, so many times I look at things and I'm like, I'd love to be able to give this to like a you know put this in a kid's room or something like this would be like a really cute little piece to go in a kid's room. But then I'm also like, my sister stitches. If she wanted to stitch her daughter something, she can stitch her daughter something. So we'll see. Anyway, next up is the third installment in the Gilmore Girls uh, Black Needle Society uh, series. So three out of four, it was Spring in Stars Hollow. So this whole section here, um, that is summer, that is autumn, and then winter will go here, and that's being held in I think it's March or April 2024. So that will then round out the remainder of it. Um, this is being stitched on a 40 count natural, no, vintage linen, vintage white, vintage white, I think. Um, just one strand over two. And uh, for the most part, it is all of the called for as charted. Um, I have substituted in here some Petite Treasure Braid glitter, like just sparkly thread in the broom. And then I also did it here, which I don't think you're going to be able to see, in the Dragonfly wing. Um, that was a bit, a bit of off-cut Krynik from Luna Mystica. So that's that one. They have actually done a live, um, I might've just been in the winter page, not on their Facebook page. I can't remember. I didn't tune in at the time, um, that revealed what the winter pattern looks like. Um, which I'm very excited. Also very sad for, cause I have really loved everything about this retreat. Um, but it is the last one and all good things must come to an end. So that will be the last one. Uh, Next up, I don't have physically, I made a little something and gifted it, but I'll put a photo in. It is To The Stars by Wolf Down The Rabbit Hole. Um, this is on a hand dyed gifted fabric from Alexis of Alexis My Amazing World. I can't remember what the fabric count was. I did have it. I feel like it's a linen of some kind. Um, I still have a piece left because I also have another chart from Wolf Down the Rabbit Hole, which is, I think it's the Hello Feyre Darling phrase. And the piece that I have left will fit that on it and then could be like a bookmark or something. So I haven't done anything with that yet. Don't know when I will, but um, they're to go hand in hand. Um, I stitched the To The Stars using um, the white etoile fabric, uh, thread from DMC and glow in the dark fabric. Oh my gosh. Glow in the dark thread, um, from DMC for the words. So the words are glowing in the dark. The mountain is the DMC etoile. So it's got a little bit of sparkle. Maybe I did it the other way around. Anyway, you get the idea. I'm going to have another bit of coffee because obviously I think I need it. Um, moving on, the next one is, which again, I haven't finished, uh, fully finished, is British Isles Adventure Cell by Caterpillar Cross Stitch. Um, I was kindly gifted this one by the Caterpillar Cross Stitch team. I did fall behind a little bit. 
on stitching it in time with the sale, but I still worked in the parts um, in the sections. So it's a really cute little map of the British Isles, which is quite a caterpillar style where they've got a world map. Um, and I think another one, maybe it is just the world map, but um, this isn't the first sort of piece that's been like this. Um, they're actually running a new stitch along, which is like mythical creatures, I think, um, which does look really fun. I just don't have time to commit to another stitch along at the moment. Um, so I won't be participating in that one, but that doesn't mean that I probably won't want to buy it. It's got a really cool purple dragon needle minder, um, that matches it. And I know dragons are a really big thing at the moment from fourth wing. So my whole opinion on all of this might change once I've read the series or the two books in the series. Um, but just thought I'd do a little PSA in case you didn't know. This is stitched on a 28 count Zweigart linen, uh, sorry, even weave. Um, that is part of the kit. I got this in the full kit with the, um, the London bus needle minder that came with it. Um, there are some very, very, very big imperfections. I miscounted on one of the map like outlines, um, I think around here. So this is quite fluffed, but you get the idea. Um, I did originally say that I wanted to finish that as a pillow for, uh, Tim's best friend, um, who, lived in the UK for a couple of years and recently got married and I did not get it anywhere. I completely forgot about it by the time the wedding came around. Um, but I reckon when I do get around to it, cause there are a few pillow finishes that I plan to finish with all of these. Um, when I do get around to it, I need to find like a big London print fabric for the backing of the pillow. And when I find that, I'll probably then strike up the motivation to make it because I have like four bags of hobby fill to put in it. So I'll get there eventually. Who knows? Maybe one day next year I'll be doing a fully finished parade. Don't hold me to that, please. Uh, next up is Girl in Kimono by Soda Stitch. I did this on a 32 count Tudor Rose linen from Pulse Stitches. Um, if you remember, I think it was last year. I just snuck in a finish on my first uh, Mirabilia, Nora. Buttercup Pixie Blossom. I can't remember if that's a Nora or a Mirabilia. I think it's a Nora because it's a pixie and it's smaller, if my understanding is correct. Um, and this is the other half to it. Probably wasted a bit of fabric and I probably could have, you know, saved a good chunk, but. It'll just come down to how I fully finish as to how much fabric I spare. But it, it's this really pretty soft pink um, that's kind of washing it out. It is probably all pink in comparison with lighter pink mottling. But um, I stitched this again with a nice counting error somewhere in the head. So it's a little bit um, personalized. But I did this as part of the my first soda stitch along hashtag from... Jordan at Tattoo, Tattooed Stitcher, Bernadette at Burn Stitches, and Amber at Rogue Mama Stitcher. Um, they were hosting a stitch along. It wasn't this soda that they were stitching. I think it was Clean Day. Um, but then I saw Maxine from Nightmare Before Stitchmas stitch this one as part of that. And I went, right, that's it. I'm in. Um, anything Japan is in my heart forever. So jumped on this and then I also had received a full set of uh, CXC threads. So this is all stitched with CXC threads. So it's not exactly like the called for. Um, this like ready orange is quite fluoro orange in comparison. So it should have been a bit more of a red color. Um, but if I didn't point that out, you wouldn't know. So that's that one. Um, again, don't know how I'm going to fully finish that one, but... I don't think, I don't think that goes in the frame. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway. Um, these are probably now some of my biggest finishes of the year, which is very exciting. Um, in what I think is the correct order, but it probably isn't. Um, Golden Bees by Alforest Embroidery. Uh... There we go. 
ago. I feel like I only showed this one a couple weeks ago. Um, this is fully kitted from our forest embroidery with the kitted called for threads and fabric. I believe it's a 32 count Zweigart linen over here on my eye. Um, so I've stitched this two over two. Um, pretty sure this is what I spoke about in my last video, but that is my favorite honey baby, my bee baby. Favorite combination of threads I've ever stitched in my life. And this one here needs to get finished into a frame to go in the back section of my house. I think every time I talk about it, it changes. It's either going in the entrance to like the wet areas in the little back hallway or to, I was even thinking in the toilet, <laughs> like in the powder room. I don't think so. Or the laundry. So I don't know. It's going somewhere back there because that's where most of Tim's family stay when they come. Um, in that little area and, you know, honey. This one, I still need to put into a pillow and take it down to our, my parents' holiday house uh, for our room. But this is Quaker Turtle. Quaker Turtle? Quaker Turtle, got that right. By Ori TM. Stitched on a 40 count let me have a look 40 count sea glass linen by number 12 stitch co and agave silk by almond m m's and i've stitched it one strand over two um, and it is honestly nicola's fabric mixed with yumi's uh silks is my all-time favorite combination of things to stitch like it's just delicious. It's like butter. They're so soft. So um, I really enjoyed stitching this one and I need to finish it so it's a nice little bed pillow, like decorative pillow um, for down there. I saw someone stitching this. I can't remember who it came up in my, my Instagram feed. And I, I'd actually forgotten that I'd stitched it and I was really sad that I'd forgotten. It was nice to revisit. See, that's the benefit of these little whip parades. Okay, next up is a new finish um, that you haven't seen yet, um, but I got it done. And that is Schoolhouse Quaker by Stone Street Stitchworks. Um, I was going to frame it, but it won't work in the frame. So I think I'm going to have to sew this into a pillow. Um, speaking of which, Oh, it's right in front of me. I found this as the fabric that I'm going to put on the back. I don't even know if it's the right kind of fabric, but I got this. Tell me that isn't the most perfect backing for the fabric, like the colors. I know sometimes people do like a really contrasting different fabric or something like that, but for Tim's grandparents, it's actually the perfect fit for it to all match together. Um, so I'm very glad that I found that. But it is all done. So this is stitched on a 36 count vintage country mocha, 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 um, using the called for DMC and over dyes, but I have made some changes to some of the motifs to bring in a bit more of the color and to kind of mix it up a little bit. Like I changed the color of these two to, because these are only being used essentially in the house. And I didn't like that. And maybe like one motif. So I've brought these in a little bit more, um, throughout. And then I've stitched everything for the family. Um, and then for the first time ever in my life, I have initialed a piece, um, which is quite nice because my initials go with the rest of their initials. Um, but I couldn't make it too big where I probably should have put it maybe a bit lower, but I didn't, um, I felt bad because I didn't put the grandkids initials on here, but there's like 25 of them and there's just no way that I could put them all on here. And a couple of them have the same initials, so they wouldn't know who is who. And then, you know, where does it end? Do you then put the wives? Anyway, so um, for those of you that might be new here, I've stitched this piece 
um, in honor of my husband's grandmother and grandfather's 80th birthdays. Um, I actually think today might also be their wedding anniversary. 50, 58 years? Yeah, pretty sure it's the 20, 21st or the 22nd. Maybe it was yesterday. Anyway, I stitched this for them. I've put their son's initials on here and then um, the year that they were married. They were both teachers. Um, and so I thought the school house was very fitting and then the house actually reminds me of one of their houses. So I thought it was quite quite fitting for them. I first saw this when Shiloh from X Stitch MD stitched it many moons ago. And then when I clicked and I thought I should stitch something for the 80th because she's got embroidery pillows in the house. Um, I then decided I should probably do this. I think a frame would have been better and Tim also thinks a frame would be better because he's like, it's a bit more sentimental if it's in a frame um, and it won't get damaged. But the frame, it, it's a funny size. The frame that I got, the frame itself will fit, but none of the matting or the border will fit and it's not quite square. So as you can see, you end up with either one really big border or one really, one thin or thick border. Um, and that was how it was to fit in the frame itself. So then the matting around it just drove me nuts and I couldn't multi-layer the matting because of how thin. So I think I'm just going to scrap it and put some hobby, hobby fill and just make it a thin couch, um, uh, pillow, um, to match the other ones that she's got in the property. So we go down there, boxing day. So on the, on Tuesday on the 26th. So I will have to do this tomorrow or Sunday and find time to pull out my sewing machine and sew it. That's going to be fun, but I will get this done. So that's probably my biggest finish of the year. So I'm very, very pleased that I got it done. And then the last one is a start and finish. It's a little small. In fact, when I pull out the sewing machine, I have intentions of pulling out um, and finish, sorry, fully finishing this. Um, but I stitched a little ornament from my friend Megan at Georgia Girl Stitching. Um, this is her little a nod to a warmer summer. Um, so this is the chart Sunny Friends. I've stitched it on a 40 count. Dwarf Newcastle Linen from 123 Stitch. I got it ages ago. Um, I thought it was quite a fitting blue because that's a lot of what our sky looks like and the beach looks like on a summer's day. It is miscounted again. My I think that's like my MO. I should have changed my YouTube handle and everything to the miscounting stitcher rather than, but anyway, that's okay. Um, so I have stitched it with, anything that I had in my stash. Majority of it is stitched with what it is called for, um, like these colors up here and in the tree. Um, and in the trunk, the snowman I've stitched in the DMC Etoile. So that's got a little bit of sparkle to it, which you probably will never be able to see because, oh, you can see it with the blurry. Um, and I didn't realize that the F on Frosty's pail was supposed to, or bucket was supposed to be in white and I'd already finished off all the white. So I backstitched it just in some yellow from when I was doing his little, is it a lay? I'm pretty sure it's a lay. Um, and then the hat, Frosty's hat, I just made it to match the sand because that was a color that I didn't have. And I'm not good at color converting. So I just thought, if that was us and we were making, we have a lot of our beach towns, I'm pretty sure it's a thing around the world, but a lot of our beach towns do uh, sandcastle contests and sandcastle buildings. And there's a big trail walk that walks you through a couple of coastal towns. Um, so when I was stitching it, I thought to myself, it actually would make sense because most people, if they did something like this, would be using sand. So Frosty gets a sandy hat. So... I don't have too many fully finished stitched ornaments. Um, I've got two that I did, which are 
Mr. and Mrs. Claus from Autumn Lane Stitchery. I have, I think, three or four of their other ones. And I haven't pulled it out, but I have the December, December Down Under from Lindy Stitches that um, I've done one on. And then I'm almost done with the second. And I don't want to fully finish those until I've got all of them finished. Um, but to cut to some plans, once I finish, I'm in the middle of fi finishing a smalls exchange piece. Um, so then once I finish that smalls exchange, I'm going to keep stitching on some Christmas stitching, um, which will be my ornaments from December down under. They will probably be a finish and FFO next year for next year's Christmas tree. And my plan actually is we've got our big Christmas tree in the front. Um, so that the lights obviously light up on the street. Um, but our TV doesn't face it. So at night we don't see it. Um, we actually want to get a smaller tree for our lounge area. Um, and that's where I'm thinking we put our like name family baubles and I put the stitching baubles or ornaments on there. So my husband likes to say that my Christmas tree is a Maya display window Christmas tree. Um, I guess for people that aren't Australian, like a Macy's. David, yeah, like a our department store um, Christmas tree. It's very color coordinated. It's very clean, um, and my ornaments don't match the colors on my Christmas tree. So the autumn Lancy tree ones do because my tree is metallic. So it's white, um, silver, gunmetal, rose gold, gold like all the metal colors. Um, and I've stitched the ornaments on a rose gold pinky kind of color. So it actually ties in with the rose gold ornaments, but this won't tie in. Um, I'm overthinking things, but that is why I'm going to have a separate Christmas tree. Anyway, so that is all my finishes for 2023. If I calculated correctly, that is nine finishes. I guess one's more of like a finish for now. Um, that's not bad. I don't think I finished anything last year. Or I finished like five pieces. Huh. Um, next up is what I started in 2023. And one of them is a new start since my last video. Oh. That was the fabric I was, I'm going to use because this, the rest of this fabric is actually what I'm stitching my smalls exchange on. Um, so that's going to be the backing to that. So I'm just going to like basically back the whole fabric and then just stitch around it. Efficiency. Okay. So that's one. Uh, not that one. That one and that one. Okay. I guess I'll go with what I've just started. Um, so oh, I also have the chart. I can show you the chart too. Sorry. Okay. So I started Holly Berry Pixie from Bella Filipina. I'm just going to leave it as it is. So this beauty. And it's got that pink fabric. Um, so I'm stitching it on a crafty leany focus, focus, 28 count firecracker. She is quite bright. I should really, I think I say this every time, I really should iron. Um, and this is where I got to. So, yeah, let's do this a bit better, shall we? Okay, so I started with the wing. I've got the skirt and I've got the little sash. Maybe that's from like her dress. Um, they are all, sorry, sorry, there we go. They are all fully stitched except for beads. So all of the chronic is done. Um, 
all of the DMC is stitched. They are all fully finished except all the gaps there are for the beads. And my little one strand is where the hollies, the little berries down the bottom start. Um, I just had to, obviously, as you can see, I had to move my frame. So I just took it off to start some other things. Um, so essentially it is her head, her skin and the frame. So, and I think the berries probably might not actually take all too long to stitch. Like it's like, I think it's like five colors. Um, so kind of if you're in that area and you're concentrating on it and I cross country stitch, um, I should be able to get, get it done. It's all of this, like the little snowflakes that are random and you have to count them. Like that's what takes my time because I suck at counting. So anyway, this will be something that will be up in the house for Christmas next year. Not this year, clearly. Um, but it's been very fun to stitch on. So I started that one. I had it for a while and then I um, started it because, well, I wanted to do some Christmas stitching and Jordan from Tattooed Stitcher had also posted that she'd started it and I was supposed to start it when she, no, she started it back in like August and I said I'd start it back then and I, I didn't start it, but I've started it now. Um, I got all the supplies for the chart and fabric of a uh, seller and Etsy that's based in Australia. Um, from memory, it's La Sua Tella, Tella, Tilla, I don't know, T-E-L-A, I'm pretty sure. Um, and I got everything except the threads because I didn't need the threads. So all of the beads, there's another bunch in there. Um, and the specialty threads. Um, I have done, oh no, I haven't. I was given, uh, there's three specialty threads. Um, they're all charted as Krynix, but I've got two Krynix and then a substitution to a petite treasure braid. And for the minimal amount of stitching of them that I've had to do so far, I'm just going to keep it as the Krynix because that's what I got. Um, but I am not a Krynix fan. Anyway. Um, so that was a brand new start, not just this year, but to ourselves to see. Um, the other new start that I had this year was Amethyst by Bella Filipina. Did I start that this year or did I actually start it last year on my birthday? Oh no, I did start it this year. Wonderful. Okay, so this is on a Color Cascades fabric. Um, Lavender Fields, I think is what it is. Um, and yes, I'm very lucky that I'm a February baby and that the, that Drin has released a amethyst chart as the only birth month so far. Um, but I started it on my birthday and then I focused on it for half of May when I did a little mermaid. Um, so when I first started, I had only done essentially this line here, um, just to count it as a start. And then I didn't touch it again. And then when I actually did pick it up, I worked out that I'd stitched it wrong and I actually had to unpick it. So it was basically a new start all over again in May. Um, but this is done except for some beads. Uh, all the stitching there is done. All of the um, petite treasure braid is done in the gem and I'm at the bottom of the tail. And then I've obviously got her to go. So um, I'll probably pick this back up as a focus piece in February again. And I reckon if I did pick it up, I would be able to get it fully finished. Sorry. I would be able to complete the chart, not not FFO, just finish the chart. Um, so that'll probably be my plan to start this one again in Feb um, and get it finished then as well. So that's one less 
one less whip. Um, and then the other new start in 2023 was, and I want to get back to, but I haven't yet. Ooh. Okay. Um, the Mermaid of the Seasons, but again, by Bella Filipina. I think I've got a favorite designer. Um, this one is on a 32 count by Color Cascade Fabrics. It is dark fantasy. And this is also from all of my Color Cascade Fabrics, um, apart from one or two, which I haven't stitched on yet, are uh, from a D-stash. So they're old fabric of the months that I got off an Aussie D stash page and um, aren't available. And then now Color Cascades is no longer in action. Um, but to give you an idea of what the fabric looks like, this is a piece that's in collaboration with Fibrelicious Yummy Fibers. And I love Gwen and I love Fibrelicious Fabrics. But when I pulled out what I had from Stash, this was the best and closest one to fit the theme and the color. Um, and if I was to buy the cold for fabric, I would have been spending about two, three hundred dollars Australian just for the fabric and um, the conversion and then shipping. So no, it would have been about one hundred and fifty, two hundred dollars. So yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't obviously. Anyway, anyway, and none of my fibrelicious fabric of the months worked with it. Nala's just sat up, and I think she's going to start barking. It's okay. Anyway, so I have fully finished uh, spring. This was the first month that was released. Spring is fully beaded, backstitched, done. Um, she's miscounted around here somewhere. So her body is actually one or two stitches smaller. It's my MO. Um, but this was actually really fun and easy to stitch. And then I started on the frame um, for summer, but because then I went and had beaded this, I then couldn't get this in the frame that I had it in and get all the way. So I have a Q snap that is big enough to fit this whole panel in it and I can work on this. Um, but it was what I was using to stitch Schoolhouse Quaker. So I had to get that done. So now I can finally put this back on. Don't know what I'm going to do when I get down to this point. I'm hoping that I can get enough room in the Q-snap where I can actually stitch down a bit on this and then that way I can run it there. Um, or just use a shorter Q-snap arm so I'm only framing, like I'm only snapping it in there. I also have no idea what I've ever done in regards to beading. Um, there's so many different techniques that you hear about and see, and I've got a bunch of invisible Nymo thread. I know not everyone loves it. it I do like it. Um, when I stitched Luna Mystica, I tried to use matching thread and I feel like it's too obvious, especially with the ones that are like floating around. So my preference is Nymo thread. But then I was always trying to get them to like line up with how my stitches were. So if my, my top arm, I go, what do I do? I do top left, bottom right, top right, bottom left. And so I was always trying to get the bead to lie from top right to bottom left. So it all sat in line with my top arm of my X. I ever thought it, we know. So then I was like, well, it doesn't feel so secure doing it this way. And, I, and some people I've heard do like a full X between their beads to get them to then line straight. And I was like, I, I can't fit my needle in to do a full X. Anyway, I worked out my own method of how it works for me. I don't know if anyone else does this. It's probably very bloody simple and I just didn't work it out. So um, be nice to me if it is, but I... Just did a, a stitch in the middle of the X and through the middle of the beads so that the beads sit straight. So then you can see that these are all sitting straight. Um, 
and it's just using the middle because this is all stitched over two um, and so all of my beads now sit straight and they fit so much better um, and it even fits really nicely in her little jeweled bathing piece I guess whatever it's called um, so it took me a few bigger pieces to work that out, but I've worked it out now and I'm very, very chuffed that I have worked it out. Um, and it is now going to be my only way of beading moving forward. So at least I've worked it out now and I'm only a couple of years into my career of beading. <laughs> but anyway, um, thought I'd share that. And yeah, so this has had all the four seasons now released. Um, Drin has done a really amazing job of including um, a mixture. So every girl has a different skin tone and a different hair color to kind of um, show the diversity, which I think was a really nice little touch. Um, and then, yeah, they're all obviously thin to the color of the seasons. So, Summer is like a pinky color, um, autumn is more of an orange, and then winter is more of a blue, which is very pretty. Um, don't know what I'm going to do with it when it's done, but that's again another problem for future me. How are we going for time? Oh goodness, we're already at 45 minutes. Okay, all I have to show you now is all of my whips, remaining whips. Um... So let's see how many of these I can get finished in the new year. So first up is Crystal Mermaid Aquabella by Bella Filipina. This is what number four of Bella's for the year. Um, so I've just got this massive tail to do and then um, I've already started beading in this section which we all know I regret but I will then bead and completely finish this and then shift it up and I will have the space up the top to do the whole body. Um, I, I know it's really bad to leave it on the Q-snap and I completely forgot that this was still on a Q-snap, so I should probably hustle. This is on the called for Till I Come Home from Fibalicious. Um, that's got the gradient, as you can see, the light blue to the dark blue. And I'm stitching this on, um, sorry, using all of the called for everything except that I started off with the Krynik and then I've substituted to Petite Treasure Braid, which I don't think you can tell um, and you won't know. It's just more like it looks better and like the purple in this section here is so much nicer. I can't even see where the purple is up there. So very happy with my decision um, and I'm just going to leave it because I can't even work out where, the, where it is in the bit that I've already stitched. Um, next up is Dark Queen of the Earth. Um, I still have to finish off her hair and then bead and finish the legs. I really should just get onto this again and just get them done, which is, I think part of why I, I just want to focus on my whips until I finish everything because I'm like, if I just focused on them for a little bit, I would get it done in a couple of, like two weeks with how I stitch and everything that I do and work and stuff. Like I could still get them done. So that's my goal for next year. Um, this is on the called for uh, Nightshade Opal Lugana from Under the Sea Fabrics. Um, I've used all the called for threads and charted beads and specialty threads. I have made substitutions to the face and kind of recharted one from there. It's in a previous video. I can't even remember what I did, so I'm sorry. I'm not going back in into it because I just can't remember. Um, if you have any questions and you need me to go into it, I, leave me a comment or send me a DM. Um, this one, I kind of, it's just not calling to me anymore. So I don't know what I'm going to do. But this is Turtle Quaker by Our Forest Embroidery. Um, hasn't changed. I don't think I've touched it at all this year. And that's all I'll say about that one. Because it's true. Um, I don't know. I might, I might, I might finish it. I might not. 
Um, this one I still haven't pulled out, but I had intentions to because there's a little bit of a stitch along that's been going, or like a round robin of this that's been going on, and I just then didn't touch it. Um, but this is Quaker Gardens by Hello from Liz Matthews. So again, this this is probably my ultimate. So I think my two favorite designers are Liz Matthews and Bella Filipina, just in what I gravitate most to. Um, mixing a Liz Matthews with a Nicola from Number 12 Stitch Co. Fabric and an Armin m ms Silk. And this is just a dream. So I don't know why I haven't picked it up more, but um, a goal of mine. So this is, yeah, Quaker Gardens. I am stitching it on Spring Fling 32 Count Linen from Number 12 Stitch Co. And it is seaweed silk from Armin m ms I'm stitching it two over two. I am doing a word conversion on the alphabet, uh, I think, but I will stitch that at the end. Um, as I speak about every time I show these pieces, I did Quaker Pumpkins by Liz Matthews with a word conversion that Megan at Georgia Girl Stitching did, which is Autumn Harvest instead of it saying All Hallows Eve, um, more reflective of an Australian autumn as well. Um, so then I had the idea of sticking with the theme of something seasonal for these pieces. I think there's summer would be the only one that's missing in what I've got calculated here, but it's probably, I don't even know if there's one that's been released. Um, so spring garden or spring blessing is what I was thinking for this one. And then the other whip that I've got is Quaker snowflakes, which is a little bit more Christmassy. Um, in like it's got the trees and stuff and I think it says glad tidings I think um, and I was going to make it say winter snow instead um, oh no oh no yeah it is it is, it is this way. That's helpful that I don't know which way is up. Uh, so then this is winter uh, Quaker snowflakes. That is the bottom. That is the top. I stitched this on a 38 count frost from number 12 Stitch Co. And I'm doing the called for NPI silks. My first time doing the NPI silks. And it doesn't capture well on camera, but that's probably a bit better. Like when you see it in person, you can actually really see the stitches. It's quite delicate, but it is there. You don't have to look for it. Um, when I look at it in camera, like you're looking, you're trying to see what's a crease and what's a stitch, but it is very obviously there. So um, I think under here, this is all the trees and the bird. So they're two different colors and that's all it is for that. And then down here has the winter, uh, sorry, glad tidings. And I think I said it would be winter snow and it's the same amount of letters. I just need to work out from one of Liz's other charts, the font. Um, so it's almost, almost at its, its length. And then that way I've got three out of the four seasons done in a Liz Matthews Quaker style that then touches on all of the, um, like it's got the season in it, which I really like. And I think from memory that I had the intentions of putting up like in a wall, on a wall, it'll probably go in like my laundry back hall area so that they're all together and I don't have to change them out because I'm not someone that remembers to change them out. Um, but we're also looking at getting a big bookshelf display cabinet instead of this situation, which will go in a different room. And if it does, then there will be room to put a little display thing. Um, so I could then mix it up for the seasons um, and put something there. I think, I think that's everything that I've got to show. The only other two whips that I can think of that 
I haven't pulled out because I haven't touched them and I probably really should do something about it is eye candy, my full coverage confetti heavy hell piece um, by Carissa Rose, which is charted by Gecko Rouge. Um, and then December Down Under Ornaments by Lindy Stitches, which Mal Rivray stitched by Liz and I all started last year as like a little nod to Aussie Summers stitch along. Um, I think we all finished the Koala. I think it was the Koala. Um, that was one we all kind of started on and then I haven't touched them since. So, um, we'll be going, we'll be doing a fair bit of driving. And then when we go down to visit people, it's a small like Q snap or frame hoop. So it's a small, easy car piece. Um, so I'm sure, I'll, and I've got all of it, like even the fabric for the new ones, um, in all in the little bag. So all I need to do is take a bag with me. I can stitch it off my phone or I can stitch it, um, off my tablet. So that'll be my travel piece. And then the last one is what I yeah intend to start before the end of the year. I've spoken about this a million and one times. And so I know you're probably all sick of it too. So the goal is to just bloody start it. So this is the fabric. It is Dusty Rose by Paddock Lane Designs. It is a take on dust on um, Picture This Plus Memory um, that I ordered in 2020, I think, or 2021, early 2021, before the world turned to crap um, with delivery and shipping, and it was just never coming. So Jeanette from JK's was able to get it reproduced by Paddock Lane. Um, so this will be for the Autumn Lane Citri Sakura Geisha Girl, in case you don't know what's, what that pattern is from Sakura. Um, I've got the, I've had all of the specialty threads and even the beads in here for a long, long time. Um, so I want to actually get some stitches into that before the new year starts so that I can actually call it a whip and have it done like have it no longer be a new start. <laughs> That's my goal. And if I can get to that, even if it's on the 31st of, De of December, I don't care. I just want to put some stitches in. And then I had the goal in January this year because we did it in 2022. Um, it was... 20... No... 2022 stitches in 2022 on a, on a piece. Um, and I had taken that and I think I got it, the idea of this from Mal with Ray that I was going to do 2022 stitches on one piece every month. And I think it lasted like a month and a half. <laughs> um, and it was my eye candy. So I think... I'm probably not going to get to 2024 stitches in January, but maybe I should probably put 2024 stitches in throughout the whole year. So it looks at me all the time. Every time I open my cupboard, it looks at me. So I really should probably put some stitches into it. Um, so we'll see how that goes. But other than that, I'm not making any other plans other than to just work on my current whips before I go. This is in 2024 before I go starting anything else. Um, and probably work on some FFO, um, things, but it's now an hour of filming. I think you're probably all sick of me. I hope you've gotten some really good stitching in <laughs> during this time. Um, I hope you've all had a wonderful 2023, um, or that it is ending better than it started or than it got to at some point. The holidays are rough for most people or um, everyone has something about it maybe that they don't like and that's okay you don't have to be feeling the vibes um, I'd really love a quiet Christmas this year but it's just not in our plans but I hope that in the midst of it all you are able to find some time for yourself um, find some joy in something that you like doing um, and bring some joy to a day for you 
Um, remember it's okay to say no and, and to not go to something or do something if that is what you need to do. Um, I hope that in 2024, I don't make resolutions because I never stick to them. And I remember, I think for like five years, um, my resolution was to not swear. And I think every year I've probably sworn more than I did the year before. Um, but I hope in 2024, we find more courage to say no to things that we don't want to do, um, not put ourselves into uncomfortable situations or do things that we feel obligated to do and we don't want to do. And we put ourselves first a little bit more. Um, so I, with that, I wish you all a safe and happy end to the year um, and start to the new year. And thank you for all your support this year. Thanks for hanging out with me on the videos that I have had the chance to post um, throughout the busy year. But I'm going to work on being a bit more consistent in the new year. I say that every video, but we'll see how we go. Um, yeah. Thanks for your, all your support this year. Merry Christmas if you celebrate. Happy New Year. All that fun stuff. And I'll see you in 2024. Thanks. Bye.